stream. We are dreamed into existence. What we do with that dream is up to us. This is Stream. I am Jessica Deruta, and I share with you my stream of consciousness. You may find Stream on my blog at TrustPsyche.com and on my YouTube channel, Jessica Deruta. Please take what serves you and leave the rest. Let us begin. How we dream is as important as what we dream, for the what of the dream knows itself through the how. Being human means knowing deep pain, loss, fear, as well as joy and felt intimacy, connection. Being human means that we live with sadness. We experience rage despair, and confusion. That these challenging emotions and states of consciousness that can overtake our entire experience and moments, that grip us from the inside or consume us from the outside, are powerful energies that are universal every human being. And just as though there are those challenging emotions and states of consciousness, what comes along with those is the gifts of Meaningful connection, love, experiences where we feel deeply seen and met, understood, where we come alive. Being human is a continuum of these experiences and states of consciousness, which are always coming and going and shifting and flowing and changing. Being human means that we have a body and we have complex emotions. And astrologically, we know that the moon, la luna, is the psychosomatic experience of life. The moon is our body. The moon is our emotions and our feelings. And it also represents our relationship with our mother. It is the archetype of mother. Our personal mother, ourselves as a mother, as a maternal nurturing figure, nourishment, connection, community. It's our family, our childhood, our past. The moon is the template through which we enter the earth realm, through our body, through our mother's body, through that relationship with our mother and then our father and our siblings, our aunts and our uncles and our cousins. It's the tribe, it's the clan, it's the group. 
It's how we feel connected or not in life. It's how we feel about ourselves, about other people, and about the world. And so the moon is primary to being human. It's who we are before we even enter this world in our mother's womb, in her belly. One being, one organism with her, feeling everything she's feeling, eating the food she's eating, taking in the oxygen that she's breathing, a circulation of blood and nutrients and energy, our bones coming from her bones. This is all the moon. It's so deep, it's so primary, it's so core to who we are. And so one would think and one would hope that our awareness of the moon would be just as deep. And yet in our more solar dominated consciousness and culture where there's a hyper focus on the egoic part of self, the individual part of self, the separate part of self. The moon often is misunderstood, not paid as much attention to. But today we are going to pay extra attention to the moon. She's in Taurus right now and she is in a tight opposition with Jupiter and forming a rare grand cross with Mercury and Mars which has gone retrograde. So today is July 8th 2018 and this is stream 7. Today we're going to be focusing on being human and living with the difficult emotions of sadness, fear, rage, despair, and confusion, and connecting it with the Moon-Jupiter astrological complex. This stream is an inspiration of sitting with my experience as a psychotherapist and just as a human being, what it's like to be alive, combined with a listener who wrote in and wanted to hear more about the moon Jupiter archetypal complex after listening to, I believe it was the second stream where I went into family patterns and astrology, having you look at the different um, shared archetypal complexes that you have in your own birth chart with that of your parents and maybe potentially your grandparents if you know their birth information. And so this person went and um, found that everyone, uh, that she and her, both her parents had moon squared Jupiter. So I want to go into that uh, combination a little bit more here today. I want to say that the people that I'm most attracted to in life, the people that I think are the sexiest people, are the people that feel deeply their grief, their fear, their despair and confusion, and still choose to come from a place of love in their actions and their behavior toward themselves and toward the rest of the world. That there is a kindness that is never lost even in the most broken-hearted moments. The people that I love and respect the most in life, that I admire the most, are those that often have experienced tremendous loss and deep grief, and yet still choose to spread so much love and joy. I'm thinking now of a colleague of mine, a peer, um, when I went to Pacifica Graduate Institute to study depth psychology, counseling psychology, a classmate of mine, call her Tam Tam, always showed up with a smile on her face, 
always showed how much she cared. I remember my first birthday in school and uh, she gave me a tarot deck. And I just, I couldn't believe it, you know, that she remembered my birthday, that she went and got me a tarot deck. It was so sweet. And, you know, the following year, she remembered my birthday again and gave me another present. I felt so connected. I felt so loved. I felt so seen. And I come to find out that Tam Tam had lost a daughter of hers. A little bit later in life, I believe it was when the daughter was in her late teens. And this marvelous human being, even in the face of one of the greatest, if not the greatest tragedy in life, to lose a child, never once made me feel bad about who I was made me feel guilty, made me feel shame, any of that stuff. Instead, she made me feel the exact opposite. And one day I talked with her about it. And the way that she talked about her very real soul-defying transformative journey of grieving the loss of her child and how it actually opened her heart up more to living life, to loving and living life more fully, more deeply in every moment. How that tragedy became a gift. And that's a difficult thing to say. Almost taboo. And yet she was real living proof to me that that can and does happen. And she's not alone in that. She shared an article with me about other parents who had written about the loss of their child and the horrificness of it, but that it ultimately led them to opening their hearts more to life instead of closing it down. And those are the people that I have the utmost respect for. I mean, they are my heroes and my heroines, genuinely and truly. And of course, it doesn't have to be a loss of a child. But we, we each have those losses, those fears, those moments of just utter darkness and despair. And that is part of being human, to know loss. We all are going to lose in the physical form the ones closest to us at some point or another. Some of us go a while in life before that happens. Others of us know it right from birth, right from young age. And we are all going to leave in our physical form and be a loss for our loved ones. So part of why I wanna go into the moon Jupiter complex in connection with being human and living with the more kind of difficult parts is because so often moon Jupiter is described in astrological texts as being a very benefic combination. So whereas the moon is our relationships, our feelings in our body, our home life, Jupiter is traditionally or classically known as the planet of good fortune good luck, blessings, abundance. And although this is true, it is a limited understanding of that planetary archetype. And when combined with the moon, I feel that it often misses the mark in describing the full range of that archetypal combination's expression but it also misses the mark and having the person who was born with it really see and understand themselves within that combination from the way that it's often described. So just as I believe there needs to be a revisioning of Saturn, which many of you have um, heard or read uh, 
my piece on revisioning Saturn in the Archive Journal, I believe there also needs to be a revisioning of Jupiter. And something that I come across as an astrological counselor is that often when I give readings, the person who has Moon Jupiter and the person who has Moon Saturn often equally feel unseen by the astrological community and texts in the description of what it's like to be born with those combinations. And so I want to explore why that is in, in regard, especially to Moon Jupiter today. So Jupiter, first and foremost, expands whatever it touches. And in that expansion, it amplifies. It helps grow whatever is there. So we have to look at the moon and we have to understand the person's relationship first primarily to their mother and then to their family. So if it is an, an if it is an inherently difficult relationship with one's mother, then Jupiter will expand and amplify the difficult aspects of that relationship with mother. And so the question for me becomes was your mother supportive of your emotions? Because if your mother was supportive, attuned to your complex, wide-ranging emotions as a young child, then the Jupiter can show up as being supportive of the lunar dimension of the emotional field, the emotional realm and aspect of life, which is, by and large, a, the majority of our infancy and toddler years and, and being in our youth. I would process the world through a feeling emotional state when we're young. And so if our mother was supportive and attuned to our emotions, then the moon Jupiter can come through as the, the benefic mother, you know, the mother that was very loving and supportive and there was a sense of abundance, not just material abundance and abundance of resources, you know, plenty of food, you know, a nice home, a good environment, but there was an abundance of emotional support and emotional attunement. And so that person who has Moon Jupiter is going to have a very different experience of their Moon Jupiter than the person whose mother was potentially critical of them. You know, that the mother wasn't um, either available or didn't have the capacity within herself to relate and attune to the child in a way that made the child feel seen, safe, and loved. And so that person who has moon Jupiter, the amplification of the moon is going to be one where it brings out a lot of those more negative or challenging feelings and experiences from early childhood of feeling alone or isolated, cut off, confused, scared. And so when that person who has Moon Jupiter, here's the description of Moon Jupiter as, you know, oh, a person who comes from a big family and, you know, the mother was always there, you know, with lots of good meals and cooking desserts and all of that. And the person's like, but my mom didn't do that. As a matter of fact, my mom told me that I wasn't beautiful. My mom told me that I wasn't smart. My mom told me I wasn't good enough. So there's a different amplification and it often leads to that person feeling, in, in my experience, more isolated, more confused, and guilty. I actually see people who have Moon Jupiter, who know astrology, and read about that combination and their experience from early childhood or the relationship with their mom doesn't match up to the positive sides of it, Jupiter as the benefic, benevolent planet, they feel guilty. Like, shouldn't I be happier? Shouldn't I be more grateful for my life and my childhood? I see this all the time. There's like, there is a guilt there. Just as the person who has Moon Saturn, who doesn't have 
the way that the texts often describe Moon Saturn as the abandoned child, the child whose mother was ice cold, the, you know, the child who um, was the black sheep. Yes, that totally can be the Moon Saturn experience. But there are plenty of people who have Moon Saturn where that's not their experience. Their experience was a mother that was very solid, very grounded, a mother who had good boundaries. And so they don't experience the um, core complex of rejection and abandonment and isolation. And so there's a not so much a guilt there that I see, but a, a real profound confusion and then a searching for, whoa, wait, was I abandoned and I didn't know it? Wait, was my mother critical of me and I just, do I not remember it? And so what I'm sharing here, and I'm going to say this over and over again throughout the rest of my life, the universal does not tell us this. Only the particular can. The universal will never be able to tell us on its own if a person experienced more of the wonderful, enlivening sides of a combination or predominantly experienced more of the hardships and the challenges of that combination. Only the particular can, only that person sharing their life and their story will help us do that. So I want to go into some of the reasons why a person who is born with Moon Jupiter or a person whose mother had Moon Jupiter both apply to what I'm, I'm going to be sharing here can sometimes come through in the more difficult or challenging way. So Part of the reason why this can either be you with Moon Jupiter or the mother with Moon Jupiter is because our mother's moon placement has a lot to do with how she relates to us because the moon is also our children. It's the child. And so if your mother has Moon Jupiter, you're going to have, you're going to be the recipient of a lot of that complex because you're her child. You know, she's taking care of you whether that was, whether she did a good job or not in that, or somewhere in between, you are her moon. So one thing that happens a lot with moon Jupiter is that there can be an overly identification with the positive emotions. So the mother can be overly identified with, let's keep everything joyful and cheery and positive. You know, it's always upbeat. It's always great. It's always good. Um, and so the question becomes, well, where do the difficult emotions go? And part of the way that a moon Jupiter mother or a person who has moon Jupiter, their mom, one way that the emotions that are more difficult show up is there can be a tendency to escape into the things that give a temporary sense of pleasure, like eating, like drinking, you know, just kind of being um, insulated at home in a womb-like experience and not really interacting with the outside world or facing anything that might be more challenging or conflict or anything like that. So there can be a tendency to overeat. There can be a tendency to smother Right, Moon Jupiter and its shadow side is the smothering mother. You know, there's an overabundance or an overindulgence in whether that's feeding or, you know, kind of being overly involved in the child's life. Like there's a certain lack of boundary there, a healthy boundary of, okay, I need alone time, you need alone time, we need our space. And so there can be an overextension, an overreaching by the mother into the child's world, right? The child who doesn't get to have a private diary, you know, the mother's going to read it. Or the child that feels like the mother's always involved in their life can read their mind, you know, there's no secrets. It's like there's no differentiation or there's not enough. It's like 
that overextension where the mother's larger than life and kind of, you know, surrounds and envelops the child. Um, and, and at times that can be suffocating, suffocating for the child where the mother doesn't have a clear sense of distinction between where the mother is and where the child is. You know, and as the child develops psychologically, it's important that there's more boundaries and more space, right? As the child becomes more of their own individual and more self-sufficient, that part of the maturation process for both the child and the mother is that the mother helps facilitate that process of necessary healthy boundaries and sometimes the moon jupiter has a difficult time doing that the other part of it is just that the mother positively reinforces the child being happy or the child being successful but when the child feels sad or there's a failure or a sense of defeat in the child's life the mother either ignores it pretends it it doesn't happen rejects it in a deeper way or doesn't make any room or space at home or in the mother and the child's relationship to talk about the more difficult or challenging sides of life. What happens when we fail? What happens when we experience loss, right? What happens when we feel fear? You know, can the mother let the child have experiences of making their own mistakes tripping and falling down and not rushing over and going, oh, it's okay, baby, it's okay, pick you up, kiss, 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 oh, you're all better, aren't you? And if you know, before the child knows it, it's like, wait, what? What's my experience? What did I just, you know, what did that hurt? Wait, am I okay? She says I'm okay. So, you know, there's no questioning of one's own experiences. The mother can be so overly involved in shaping and creating that child's experience to be a certain way that the child doesn't really get to have the opportunity to see, well, what's my experience? How do I feel? What do I want to say? So there gradually can become a a, uh, removal or a shoving out of our own darkness of our own dark emotions. So another way that the moon Jupiter can come through in a way that can be challenging is that the mother gets to have all of the pain where the mother gets to be the victim or the mother is the one that has the difficult life and the child has to be the star or the light or the good or you know the child's experiences and difficulties pales in comparison to the mother's so the child has to carry the beautiful wonderful side you know, the mother that's so proud of their child and all of their successes and all the focuses and all their successes and, you know, kind of shows them off as like a trophy to all their friends, right? The mother can like brag about the child and how wonderful and how proud they are of the child. But the mother is suffering. The mother is in pain. The mother is in a, a difficult place. But look, look, look how amazing the child is. Another way that that can come through is that the child of someone who has moon Jupiter can feel that they do not exist in the relationship, that they feel invisible, that they disappear, right? Again, because the mother is so larger than life that that they can envelop the child and consume the child. And so the mother gets to have all the big feelings, right? Jupiter is the bigness and the moon's the feelings. And so the mom gets to have all the big feelings and they're really big. All the time, you know, like where the mother is um, kind of dictated by her emotions and the child disappears within that and potentially either becomes a caretaker of the mother, right? Like kind of like the mother's therapist, attuned to the mother instead of the mother being attuned to the child and the child can disappear. And so the child can lose touch with what their needs and emotions are. And that's the other part of the moon is it's our needs, So a moon Jupiter person can be 
really good at supporting other people's needs and a tendency to overgive, right? A huge heart, lots of care, very nourishing, very maternal to other people. And we see that like in the social worker, we see it in someone who volunteers a lot. We see it in someone where there's a generosity of spirit to nurture the other person. And that can happen at the expense of oneself, of taking care of oneself fully and deeply, nourishing oneself. Because there was a conditioning from early in life to support the other person's needs and emotions. So it can be the aspect of the caretaker. And there is also a possibility of repeating the pattern if one's mother was smothering to then smother other people because that was the way that one learned how to care and how to connect. And so on the one hand, someone who has moon Jupiter can be experienced by friends as like, oh, that person is, you know, always hosting and is so generous with their time or their money or, you know, whatever it is. Um, but wow, like, Sometimes I feel like they give too much or like there's a implicit expectation back that like the gift isn't free, you know, the gift isn't being given freely. That it's all well and good that, you know, this person um, came and um, baked a casserole and a pie and showed up and when I was in need. But why do I feel now this sense of being tethered to them? out of like a certain unspoken obligation um, to return the favor in, in some way. So sometimes the other people in one's life who have, someone who has been Jupiter, the other people in your life can sometimes experience the generosity if it's not given freely. Right? If it wasn't given freely to you, if your mother gave you gifts, but there was an expectation you would give her something in return, like your time or your attention, then there can be a tendency to unconsciously repeat that pattern and do that to other people. And so sometimes it can be a critique of people who have uh, the friends of people who have moon Jupiter. Right. So we, we, we want to be curious about that and take a look at that and go home. Huh, like, were the gifts that were given to me given unconditionally or was there a conditionality in it and sometimes we can see that with the moon jupiter mother where there is a condition like the love is conditional upon which there is a, a trade some kind of exchange it's unspoken but it's a it's a felt thing it's implicit um that you know okay i will be a supportive good mom, but in return I expect you to love me and pay attention to me and da 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 da. And this is the thing that I think can be potentially challenging with any relationship between a parent and a child, but in this case with Moon Jupiter. Parenting is a one way street. And sometimes I have people kind of go, huh? Parenting is a one-way street. It is supposed to go from the parent to the child with zero expectation or attachment to the child's response back. That is healthy, good parenting, good boundaries. And it's often, it's rare. It's rare to see that. I mean, it takes a lot of work on the parent's part to be able to make it a one-way street. And, you know, of course, like most things that are done in life unconditionally and freely, there is a often a much larger return. So it reminds me of this quote I saw yesterday. Um, I let go of it all. I lose nothing. And I gain everything. I let go of it all. I lose nothing. I gain everything. Oh, if that's not the 
mantra for life, I don't know what is. And if that's not the mantra for parenting, I don't know what is. You know, from the moment of conception to giving birth to raising a child and having them become an adult and start their own family, I let go of everything. I lose nothing. I gain everything. And that's the thing, is when we parent from an open handed place when we're not having guilt be involved there's not a conditionality to it 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 makes the child naturally want to be in a loving positive relationship with you to give back because they are coming from a place of just genuine gratitude of overflowing of love and You know, gratitude, I think, also can be associated with Jupiter. You know, Jupiter expands and grows whatever it touches. And so we must look at what is it growing and what is it touching to help us understand what it's expanding and amplifying. And yes, It is the archetype of positivity. But when we hold Jupiter as the benefic and Saturn as the malefic, we do an injustice not only to those archetypes in of themselves, but to the people who carry them, especially with personal planets, inner planets in their charts. It's an unnecessary weightiness to either be overly positive or overly negative in that area of one's life. And one often can feel not seen or understood or ultimately empowered and supported in their journey. So it's important that we round out and bring the other side in. And that's why, you know, I'm doing something that is actually quite unusual, which is to bring in the Moon-Jupiter complex with being human and the more challenging sides of being human. So we we usually would use that comparison with moon Saturn. So this is a, an attempt at that revisioning. Sometimes what can be difficult about moon Jupiter is that Jupiter is about growth expanding ourselves. But when we grow, there's growing pains. And growing pains can run counter to Moon Jupiter in that they're not comfortable. Sometimes Moon Jupiter likes comfort and pleasure, that which is familiar, sometimes more easy. Part of the reason why we experience discomfort when we grow is because as we stretch ourselves, we face the unknown. We work our edges. And oftentimes, there's some fear there, some worry or anxiety, or a lot, a lot of fear and worry and anxiety, and confusion. It's not always clear the path forward and what to do. Confusion is a big part of being human. Sitting with something until it becomes clear, or at least clear enough that we make a decision or move forward. Moon Jupiter in of itself doesn't always necessarily give us that impulse to take risks or to take a leap of faith. It can feel kind of counter, actually, to that energy. But what we discover is that Moon Jupiter can also come through as the support and the blessings that happen when we participate with our growth process. Moon Jupiter shows us that we are cared for And as we grow, the abundant maternal love is there for us. 
whether that's by our own personal mother or the great mother. Blessings pour down when we listen to our needs and take care of our bodies, emotions, and all our relationships. Moon Jupiter teaches us that there is a core support to nourish us deeply so we can be here and be alive. I'll leave us with one last aspect of the moon Jupiter. And that is, there can be, deep down at the core, under all the layering of life and whatever one's conditioning may have been, that sense of emotional support. And if that emotional support, for whatever reason, couldn't come from one's parents, one's family, it is in there somewhere, ultimately to be given to one by oneself. But in order for us to be kind and compassionate to ourselves, we have to have it be modeled to us by someone else. And if we didn't get that experience early in childhood, we can seek it out. We can resource ourselves as adults to get that positive, loving, unconditional support in our, for our emotions and our feelings. And that can help shed the layers that have blocked one from feeling deeply nourished in oneself. That is always possible for us to get later in life what we did not have early in life. And although it may be difficult and it may take time, in my experience, having the support of another person or other people does fundamentally change who we are for the better. This is Stream, and I'm Jessica Deruzza. When we were strangers, I watched you from afar. And when we were lovers, I loved you with all my heart But now it's getting late And the moon is climbing I want to celebrate, see it shining in your eyes. Because I'm still in love with you, I want to see you dance again. Because I'm still in love with you. harvest moon because I'm still in love with you I want to see you dance again because I'm still in love with you on this harvest moon